in part 12 of our HD Before Bed series on uh, Jan van Denberg's Crash Course in Stars, we're looking at Fomalat. Uh, Fomalat is one of the, the cardinal stars. And uh, we've been looking at these, these cardinal point stars. Um, Ra was at the point to decide that he would never teach this star, but, well, he did. The constellation Piscis Astrinus, or Pisces Astrinus, the southern fish, lies in the southern sky. And Fomalat is a very odd star. The star is just 200 million years old, whereas our sun is 4.5 billion years. So Fomalat's quite, quite young. Um, and it isn't expected to live longer than a billion years. Stars surrounded by a circle of dust, similar to the Kuiper belt, surrounding our solar system. The dust is seemingly caused by the orbit of a Saturn-like planet, making comets collapse on each other, with the dust as a result. Hmm. Fomalat, the mouth of the whale. This is the constellation Piscis Estrinus. Austrinus. In the Western world, the other stars had only their system name. So Jan writes, he thought it would be a good idea to promote the Chinese names, where this constellation is called the Black Tortoise of the North. In Greek mythology, the constellation is known as the Great Fish, and it's portrayed as swallowing the water being poured out by Aquarius, and by that, saving the world. The myth refers to the Great Deluge, the two fishes of the constellation Pisces are said to be the offspring of the great fish. Occultations. All cardinal stars are near the ecliptic line, making it likely to make occultations with the moon and other planets. However, Fomalhaut is not occulted by the moon. So having the moon in your 55 makes it worth watching for oddities. Hmm, interesting comment there. The moon in gate 55, I suppose, which must be where Fomalat is in this era, which makes sense because we were just looking at Regulus in 59, and the cardinal stars being Aldebaran and Antares opposite of each other, and then Regulus and Fomalat opposite of each other. So, yeah, it makes sense. It must be in gate 55. The ruling stars, Alcyone, Sirius, and Dubé. In Cosmology 1, uh, the Bond 2, Ra looked at these stars that were given extraordinary power in the sense of being coordinating agents of the way in which the program operates on Earth. He truly understood what their nature is and what their purpose is, because he was told. And this is Alcyone in Gate 20, Line 1, currently. Sirius in Gate 39, Line 6, currently. And Dubé in Gate 7, Line 3. The 3955. So the first thing Ra saw when starting this process of investigating the royal stars was the link between Sirius in gate 39 and Fomalhaut in gate 55. This link represents the definition where the mutation is taking place. This evolutionary development, the way it's moving us from seven-centered to nine-centered, and this process of being able to open up the viability for the emergence of conscious penta why we look at that mutation within that context. But of course, the program sees that mutation in another context. It would be the death knell of this whole process. It is a triggering mechanism. It's like watching two synchronizing clocks, Ra said. The orchestrating principle. Along with the planet Jupiter, which is in essence the facilitator of the program, Sirius, Alcyone, and Dubé represent the coordinating principle, what Ra called the orchestrating principle. That is, through them, it is all orchestrated. The evolutionary process, the timing of the mechanisms, all of these things that take place, and with including Jupiter, there's this sense of the way in which the, the domain of illusion is built, literally the way in which the whole construct is built. We see Sirius in uh, gate 39, Fomalhaut in gate 55. 
Sirius entered gate 39. Um, let's see, year till. Interesting. Ah, it's entered in 1669 and going till 1736. And then it, and so it's interesting to see how these, uh, yeah. I see. Fomalhat stays a little bit later. Um, I think it stays in gate 55 till 2074. It looks like. Interesting. But this 3955, I mean, when this mutation, this is really getting ready right before 1781. And um, yeah, really interesting. I mean, preparation for the 1781 advent of the ninth centered being and carrying us through this plutonic interregnum to 2027 and beyond. And then it says 3263. These four cardinal stars aren't only the trigger of mutation, but on cosmic scale, the next 1300 years, somebody's turning off the lights. This is what it is. The new cycle supports the emergence of the rave, the conscious penta. No evolutionary future, only a marker. There's no 11 centered being on the horizon. There never will be such a thing. This mutative potential of the 55 carries with it a tremendous focused power, representing much larger phenomena that are really at work. So this year, 3263, that's around the time when Ra said uh, would be the real kind of apocalypse state. Things might get really apocalyptic before then, but humanity would survive, the rave would emerge, and so on, until starting in 3263, we enter into what he termed Brahma's long night, which was a long period of all of the previously incarnate personality crystals being disincarnate, that is, no longer being in, in human form or in any form for a very long time uh, until they, they you know, eventually incarnate again in the form called the Aeron. The vessel of love and the four royal stars, when the cardinal stars emerged into our consciousness, when they marked us and we marked them, that was the moment that they were carrying with them the specific energy of the vessel. It's here our earliest notions of the Godhead began to emerge. These stars are carrying the cornerstones of the illusion of allness to include what is very much a mystical definition, that all of these aspects you look at in the vessel, that this is the very beginning of bowing down to some kind of great creative force. More than that, our alignment with the G-Center, and while global cycles operate by locks and keys through that G-Center, relative to the vessel and the Sphinx, that this alignment at the very beginning established the illusion for our whole movement forward in terms of our civilization. When we see the turning, the moving of the clock, again, the whole magical thing is to really see that as these arms move, this here, the underlying mechanics, always stay the same no matter what the illusion is on the surface. And yet it's the illusion that we live in. It's the illusion that wraps us. And here's the illusion mechanism at work. And then this graphic, uh, for those who studied locks and keys, this is a graphic showing um, this outer ring is the locks, the tropical zodiac, and then the inner are the, um, basically the, the, the current cycle and then the next cycle from the sidereal zodiac. Shaping our consciousness. This is the illusion mechanism and it moves through the gates and lines. This is the positioning now with the four pillars of the way in which the dome of illusion is established to grasp the, in the innocence of the intellectual mind 7,000 years ago. Not enough names for enough things to make the Maya dense enough. And that's how it works. While nowadays humans are so blasé about the sky, most of its magic is really gone. 
What it meant to the consciousness 7,000 years ago, the only way to grasp it was to concretize it, to turn it into something. What you're actually turning it into is actually what it was conditioning you to perceive, the feedback of the neutrino ocean. It expanded our consciousness. It offered up questions that truly could not be answered. And it shaped our illusion. It shaped our consciousness. It's about taking a cosmic perspective to be a passenger that is attuned to the evolutionary process. It's not practical. It's about enriching the passenger. This is mind candy. This is the kind of thing that a passenger needs in order to hone their perception, to be able to see through the veils, to be able to see through the bullshit that's all around us, to be able to see through the not self and the not self delusion and to understand what makes it all work. These stars in the sky, and it's not about that they themselves uniquely are the source of the way in which the program operates. They are part of the poster children of the background neutrino ocean. They are highlights and focus points of that neutrino ocean, being in a vast data field of consciousness. It's not about the filtering of that consciousness as something that just has to be done. It is part of the crystal consciousness field. It is a vast process, and the advantage of being able to look up into the sky again in this very modern way as we are able to, to begin to remove ourselves from our personal connection to the mundane plane, and to begin to take a cosmic perspective. Jan writes, he means a cosmic perspective that rather than being concerned, to begin to see that the neighbor operates with vast laws that within the context of the knowledge we have are accessible. We are not here to be one with the program. We see a nice graphic of the Fomalhaut system here and the Fomalhaut's movement in time showing that in 1935, it went into 55.4, 2002, 55.5, and 2067, it'll go into 55.6. So, yeah, interesting. And then um, as we've seen before, you know, if you have sun in 55.5 and you were born after 2002, um, Fomalat is probably communicating through you, you know, more, more so. Uh, or if, you know, if you have Jupiter or Mars, you were born before 2002 and you have the, either of those in gate 55, line four. Then you have a stronger connection to Fomalat there. One of the most beautiful things is to deeply grasp the nature of juxtaposition. And in grasping the nature of juxtaposition comes an understanding that the juxtaposed field truly can be anything and it can be nothing. It is so incredible. And yes, we live within it and life has its densities. He writes, he does know that. But there's a true magic in being able to look up in that night sky and not see stars because there are in essence, no stars to see but this vast orchestrated program of consciousness that we are so much a part of, that is so beautiful to be a part of when you understand how it works. Human design is protection in the changing of the cycle. Jan writes, his hat off to Fomalat. What a tremendous performance for such a baby of a star to be the key player in such a vast cosmic drama and to bring precisely the energy of this new baby that isn't going to live long these new raves that aren't going to live long. It's bringing its magic pouring in. And we are on the edge of the turning of an age. When that background frequency goes away, you better know how to tread water. It's why human design was given. So that here is some protection in the changing of the cycle, because the protection lies within each and every one of us in the uniqueness of our own authority. It is the only thing that's going to protect us when the wheel turns. It's the only thing that's going to protect our children when the wheel turns. We have this nice graphic uh, from Drew Gibbons here. It's 
showing quite a bit, showing uh, the different global cycles. Very interesting, interesting things here. All right, I think that's a good place to stop today. Uh, we will pick up next time. And um, yeah, we'll pick up next time with, uh, let's see what's next. Next, we will be looking at Spica. So thank you for joining me on this journey. Stay tuned until next time when we pick back up with Spica. Till then, thank you. Thank you.